So good afternoon everyone. So today we're going to talk about the firewalls, module two of the end-to-end -end security program. So this is one of the most important topic with respect to the CCI security. We're going to start from the very basic of the firewall. What is the firewall? Why we require a firewall in your production? What are the different interfaces on the firewall? High availability on the firewall and different topics. So what is the security domain? Before starting the firewall, we should know what is the security domain. So to start with this, what is a network security, uh, security engineers does? So network security engineers must protect the valuable resources within a particular network. That's what the main agenda of a network security engineer in a company. For example, a corporate data might be confidential or critical to the operation of a business or to offering a patient care, in which case it must be kept from prying eyes and protected from tampering. So basically we want our critical data to be get protected. But to protect those particular critical data, what we require? And from whom we, are, we want this particular critical data to be get protected? Let's understand that. To protect these resources, the network must be somehow be divided into two major domains. What are those? One is called as a trusted domain, where I trust the most, and one is the untrusted part of the zone, which is nothing but in our, our topic will be internet, unsecured zone. The trusted portion of the network are also known as a security domain. Everything inside the security domain is protected from everything outside the security domain, which is your untrusted part. The most common and the effective way to implement a security domain is to place a firewall at the boundary between the trusted and the untrusted part of the network. So basically we require a firewall to make a line in your network between a trusted world and an untrusted world. Firewall overview, let's talk on that. What is the basic idea behind a particular firewall? that we have already discussed to make a line to draw a line in your production in your perimeter level where we define that these are the devices these are the resources which are where in very most trusted zone and this is the boundary from where the untrusted zone starts so basically there are two goals with respect to the firewall to provide the people in your organization with access to the dub 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 without allowing the entire packet or the world to peek in and to erect a barrier between an untrusted piece of a software, your organization, public web server and the sensitive information that resides on your private network. Now to explain you this particular point, let me start with a particular slide. Now let's say for example, what is an application? An application can be a software which provides services to the user clients. Now like, like the way we have a network world, network which is divided into three uh, tier of hierarchy that we usually call as what core, distribution as well as an access layer. In a very same way an application is also being divided in the three tier of hierarchy which we call as web, app, and database what usually happens is what is the main goal of a particular firewall I have a user let's say for example a Bob is sitting over here I should have a kind of a device in my production at the perimeter level or at the last boundary of your production which is going to get connected with the internet I want to give him that facility that Bob, anytime you want to go out, you are allowed to go out towards an unsecured world. You don't have to take any permission. But whenever any outside person 
like Alice is sitting outside over there, or the uh, person or the packet, if it's coming from an unsecured zone, it has to take a permission because by default, this packet should be denied. So if I'll read my line again, to provide the people in your organization to have an access to the internet without allowing the entire world to peek in. So impose a specific configured gateway machine between the outside world and the site in a network. All traffic first go to the gateway where the software decides whether to allow that particular packet or to reject it. Power. It's basically a metaphor. If, if uh, we want to have a precise definition of a particular firewall, so a network firewall is a system. It can be a single device. It can be a single device. It can be a group of devices and so on and so forth. So when I talk about a firewall, it can be a system, a single device. A firewall can be a single device. A firewall can be a group of systems. That means multiple devices. Why we require multiple devices? Just to have an HA, high availability. A trusted, uh, we require a group of systems used to control access between the two networks. A trusted network as well as an untrusted network using a pre-configured rules or filters. Firewall can be a hardware or it can be a software also. So when we talk about the firewall, both the uh, it comes in an appliance mode also as well as hardware. It comes in a VM form also that can be deployed on your hypervisors. It can be a single router. You can make a router by applying an access list that be, uh, that router becomes a stateless firewall, which we gonna talk in the future lectures. It can be a multiple routers. It can be a single host. It can be a multiple host running this uh, firewall software. As I mentioned, it comes in a software as well as a hardware. It can be a hardware appliance specifically designed to provide the firewall services or any combination. They vary greatly in the design, functionality, architecture and the cost. So every different kind of a routers comes with their own variable functionality as well as an architecture. Security levels. Now what is the major goal of a particular firewall that we have already discussed? The trusted zone, the secured zone, or the devices which is present inside your domain should be allowed to go out, but the devices, but the people who are there in your untrusted network or outside your network should not be allowed to move in. Now, saying this particular line, I'll take this as an example. The topic is the security levels. Now basically a security level is nothing but a value which is being defined from 0 to 100. Least is the worst, 100 is the best. So the interface, yes, and the security levels will be defined. Where? On the interfaces. So by this uh, security level but we define on a particular interface will get to know that whether that particular uh, resources are there in a trusted world or in an untrusted world. Now let's say for example I'm have a firewall can be a VM can be a hardware. Now this firewall which is present at the perimeter level I'll be having let's say for example two interfaces. Generally, we basically take, and this is the best practice which I'm trying to tell you, gig 0 slash 0 and gig 0 slash 1. Gig 0 slash 0, the last one, O, represents your outside. 0 is usually represented with the outside. That means this is an interface which is going to my un untrusted world. This is going towards the van. This is going towards the internet where the hackers are present. So by default, the security level will be the least one, zero. That means on this interface, I don't trust at all. In a very same way, this gig zero slash one, this is an interface which is going towards my inside zone, inside world, whether my network resources will be present over there, which is going to be get connected with the LAN, 
and under the LAN, you will be having multiple resources in a different different subnets, different VLANs, and so and so forth. So when you say that the interface is an inside interface, that means the security level will be what hundred. That means this interface is the most secure one. And what we say since starting, what is the goal of a particular firewall? The goal of a firewall is to allow the traffic from a trusted zone to an untrusted zone. So can I come to a very important conclusion? The traffic flow, when we talk about a traffic flow, that means traffic is always allowed from high security level to the low security level. But whenever the traffic is coming from a very least untrusted zone, the firewall should drop that particular traffic. So can I come back to another conclusion? Whenever the traffic is coming to a low security level, to a high security level, the traffic will always will be blocked. Now to allow this particular traffic, we need to write certain rules. And that rules will be like your access list. One kind of a rules that we can set off a rules. You can perform and save your internal IPs by deploying a NAT over there. 